The story begins with a school in France filled with mischievous and underperforming students. The annual results of this school are so bad that only 12% students passed. The school's principal is in a meeting with the academy inspector, struggling to understand how such a dismal result could occur even though they have some of the best teachers in France. The situation is so dire that if at least 50% of the students don't pass this year, the trustees will stop funding the school, which will eventually shut down. The academy inspector offers a rather unconventional suggestion to the principal, if having the best teachers doesn't make a difference, why not summon the worst teachers in France? Who knows they might bring about a miraculous change. With no other options in sight, the principal agrees to the idea, and thus the worst teachers in France are brought into the school. On their first day, the English teacher Miss Gladys arrives in the class, who turns out to be super aggressive and seems to derive more pleasure from hitting students with chalk than teaching them. There is a particularly mischievous student named Boulard in the class, who always arrives late. As he enters Gladys's class late once again, she unleashes a barrage of chalk at him. Witnessing the behavior of their new teacher the entire class is left astonished. Following that, the mathematics teacher Katiro arrives. He is so lazy that he not only showed up 20 minutes late but also spends the next 10 minutes explaining the meaning of his name to the class. After that, he steps outside to smoke a cigarette and remains there until the period is over. Then comes the history teacher, Antonier, who accidentally walks into the wrong class where the German teacher Marie was teaching. Without hearing a word from Marie, he assumes her to be a student and asks her to take a seat. He has such a fascination with Napoleon that he hardly cares about the rest of history's chapters and only teaches about Napoleon. After a while, the German teacher stands up and informs Antonia that it is not a history class but a German class, and that she is not a student but a teacher. Embarrassed, Antonia leaves after apologizing. In the lunch break, Antonia develops a crush on Marie and sneakily keeps glancing at her from afar. During the activity period, their new PT teacher Houston turns out to be quite rough, instructing students to climb trees. Despite many students falling and getting hurt, Houston remains unfazed, continuing to encourage everyone to embrace their masculinity. In the next period, a beautiful teacher named Amina enters the class, capturing the attention of all the boys, causing them to be utterly distracted and even falling to the ground when she turns around. Bular is late to class again, and upon seeing Amina, his jaw drops in awe. Next up is the philosophy class, where their new teacher places his coat on a student's head and declares it to be a coat hanger from now on. To everyone's surprise, he spends the entire period teaching his utterly bizarre philosophies, effectively wasting the entire class time. Then comes the chemistry class, and their new teacher Albert enters, conducting experiments in a haphazard manner, causing the whole class to be covered in soap suds. After school dismissal, Antonia once again approaches the German teacher Marie to apologize for his mistake. He makes an excuse and suddenly lifts Marie into his arms, as he has no idea how to talk to girls. Throughout the week, these seven teachers teach the students in peculiar and bizarre ways, and by the end of the week, a crowd of parents gathers at the school, complaining about the way their children have been treated. Some are saying that the chemistry teacher burnt their child's bag, while others claim that the PT teacher broke their child's bone. Frustrated by these complaints, the principal immediately calls the academy inspector hoping for some support. However, the inspector seems to be utterly unconcerned about the school's situation and dismisses the principal's worries, stating that the principal is overreacting. Following day, the principal decides to take matters into his own hands. Firstly he glued the chalks to the table to prevent the English teacher from hitting any students, and when the English teacher attempts to hit students with a duster, even the duster is rigged with a spring mechanism that causes it to flip around and hit her instead. When the lazy teacher Katiro's class comes, he pulls out a folding chair to relax. As soon as he sits on it, an electrifying jolt crackles beneath the chair. And just as he attempts to leave early, a voice from a hidden speaker behind a clock reminds him that the period hasn't ended yet, and there are still 10 minutes left in the class. Next up in Antonia's class, where he only teaches about Napoleon and nothing else, so the principal decides to project another chapter on the screen to remind him that there are other chapters too. Following that, it's Einstein's turn, I mean Albert. He finds himself limited to experimenting solely with water since the principal has locked away all other chemicals in a cupboard. Then it's the turn of the beautiful Amina Madam. The principal has the heater removed from her classroom ensuring that she wears complete clothes and that the student's attention remains focused on the studies and not anywhere else. On the other hand, Antonia seeks advice from the other teachers on how to impress the German teacher. The PT teacher tells him that girls prefer masculine men and advises Antonia to become tough and strong. Following this, Antonia takes off his shirt outside the school, attempting to appear as a bodybuilder and a powerful man to impress Miss Marie. He even asks her out on a date, but his plan backfires. Marie is clearly unimpressed by his appearance and behavior and flatly declines his invitation to go on a date. As the end of the year draws near, there seem to be no improvements visible among the students. The teachers hold the principal accountable for this, pointing fingers at him for meddling in their teaching methods. The academy inspector advises the principal against interfering in the teacher's methods, giving them complete freedom to teach the students however they please. Now these teachers are having a blast. Antonia transforms into Napoleon and begins chanting his praises. 
lazy Mr. Kutiro just lounges around and eats, as if he is on vacation at the beach rather than in school. In Gladys's class, when Bular pulls the hair of a girl sitting next to him, she complains to Gladys. In response, Gladys cuts the girl's hair, reasoning that if she doesn't have long hair no one can pull it. With all the teachers being their own bosses, the principal has no authority left. In the science class, the teacher continues to create unusual experiments that result in explosions. Following that, the philosophy teacher has all the students undress completely to make them understand the true essence of nature. His point is that if no animals in the world were close, why should we? In a matter of a few days, the peculiar teacher's story spread to the nearby schools, and their students begin sneaking into the school as well. Gradually so many students start coming that there isn't even enough space left to stand in the classrooms. The school turns into a constant party, and the students are completely enamored with the eccentric teachers, seeking their autographs. Meanwhile, the PT teacher advises Antonia that girls are drawn to guys who resemble princes. Hearing this Antonia transforms himself into a prince and even rides a horse to impress Marie. However, his plan backfires as the poor horse suddenly dashes away. As the exam's dates are near, the students from other schools are prohibited from coming in. All the students are given a mock test to assess their preparation, but this time the situation is worse than before, only 3% of the students manage to pass the mock test. The principal grows furious and blames the academy inspector for the idea of hiring terrible teachers, resulting in the current state of affairs. It is then academy inspector reveals his true intention, he has never wanted the idea to succeed. His plan is for all the students to fail again this year so that his superior will get fired and he can take over that position himself. Antonia sneakily listens to all the conversation and informs the other teachers about it. When they realize that they are considered the worst teachers in France, they decide to prove everyone wrong. Antonia comes up with a plan to steal the exam papers and give them to the students because the exams are approaching and teaching all the students so quickly would be quite challenging. The next day, they put their plan into action and join the protest outside the education ministry's office. When the police are dispersing the protesters, Gladys lies down on the ground and manages to go unnoticed. Gladys and Katiro take on the role of keeping watch outside the office, while their other colleagues enter the premises. Amina charms the security guards with her beauty, and in the meantime, all the teachers make their way into the office where the exam papers are kept. However, the new challenge lies in opening the safe that houses the papers. Katiro puts on his thinking cap and instructs the teachers to enter the minister's election-winning date into the lock, and miraculously, the safe unlocks. With the papers secured, they successfully carry out the theft and make their way back. Afterwards, the students are presented with another mock test, only to discover that these foolish teachers have accidentally stolen papers meant for younger children. While the students are impressed by the teacher's efforts, with only two weeks left until the final exams, their hopes are already shattered. Antonia submits his resignation letter, realizing that there is little he can do to help the students pass. As Antonia is leaving the school in dejection, the German teacher approaches him and remarks that she had thought Antonia was brave like Napoleon, but he is fleeing the school like a coward in its final moments. This comment angers Antonia and he decides not to resign. Filled with determination, he climbs onto the school's rooftop and passionately recounts the story of Napoleon to all the teachers and students, encouraging them to study with all their might. From that day on, the philosophy teacher starts drinking to teach the students, hoping his inner philosophy will be expressed better. Meanwhile, in Gladys's class, all the students start wearing helmets to shield themselves from Gladys's attacks. Likewise, all the teachers put in a lot of effort to teach the students, and when the results come after three months, everyone is amazed. This time, 49% of the students have passed, which is a record in the school's history. However, the numbers are still below 50%, so the school will have to close down. On the other side, the academy inspector is celebrating his apparent victory by drinking alcohol, as he envisions taking over his superior's position. However, his jubilation is short-lived as a letter arrives in the principal's office, bringing him immense joy. The letter announces that Bular has been expelled from the school due to consistent failures over several years. This development reduces the count of failed students from the school, tilting the balance so that now 50% of the students have successfully passed. This news spreads happiness all around, and Bular is lifted on shoulders and danced with in celebration. Later on, all the teachers receive promotion letters that extend them the chance to teach students from a different school. However, knowing that they don't truly deserve the promotion, they decline the offer and choose to stay in the same school and continue teaching the students here. By this point, the academy inspector's plan has entirely unraveled. Lastly, Antonia also manages to win over the German teacher's heart and seals their connection with a passionate kiss. If you like the explanation please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video, till then take care and goodbye.